Hey, this is Derek, and welcome back to another episode of Cooking in a Quarantine. This is going to be a Thanksgiving edition, even though it's not Thanksgiving, it's April. Uh, we're going to cook basically a Thanksgiving dinner um, with a little little difference to it, a little bit of things different to it. So we have a turkey. Uh, this is just turkey breast. It's not the whole turkey, so we cook this a little bit different than we would cook a whole turkey. And for this, we need a few things. Um, Basically with the turkey is you want to wash it, get all the blood off of it first, make sure that it's uh, clean, and then you want to pat dry with a paper towel to get all the water off of it. Once we have that, we're going to need obviously a roasting pan to put it in. Um, you'll need a few things with this too. We're going to need a spray so we can spray and get some of the spices to stick on this. As far as the spices goes, you can have a basic spice, which is going to be a uh, onion powder, garlic powder, pepper, some bay leaves in the bottom of it, and then you want to use a dry rub. I make a homemade dry rub. I'll give you that recipe at a different time. Um, but this is just a dry rub you put on there. It's basically mustard powder, um, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, uh, a few, uh, I think a little bit of cayenne, a few different things I put in there that I'll give you at a different time. Uh, and you can use any dry rub you want. You don't just have to have your own. You can have, this. just this alone is fine, but you can add some stuff of your own. Um, inside the turkey, I put a few things, and this is when you get rid of some of your fruit that it's not going doing too well. Because whatever we put in here, we're not going to eat. This is just going to add a little flavor, keep the turkey moist. Uh, you can do things like an apple, orange, lemon, lime, and onion and garlic. Uh, additionally, we'll probably put a couple things in there uh, in the pan. So we'll have some celery in there, some carrots in there, and a little white wine uh, and some garlic. These will go in the pan, in and around it. What we're trying to do with that is you can have some roasted vegetables with the turkey, which is fine. Um, these are going to cook for probably 325, 350 a pound for eight pounds. So it's going to take about three hours for this to cook. Two and a half, three hours for this to cook total. Um, but it's pretty easy to prep. We're going to put it together. Uh, the turkey's already washed. So the next step for us is going to be is to make sure that it's patted dry, there's no liquid, I can see a little bit of liquid in there, so I'm gonna take that up, dry it up first. I actually spray, even though I line it with tinfoil, I actually spray it with a, with a, um, uh, a cooking spray, just to make sure that nothing sticks to it. Uh, and this will be the first phase. Once we get past this phase, we're gonna start with the mashed potatoes, we'll start with the stuffing. Uh, cranberry sauce is easy to get out of the can, but this will be a full course meal. We're gonna have mashed potatoes. We're gonna have stuffing. We're gonna have some roasted vegetables. We're gonna have a homemade, uh, a homemade gravy or a gravy-based start and cranberry sauce. So this will be like a, a mini Thanksgiving dinner, and this will feed a family of eight, actually, uh, with, with leftovers potentially. And if you have leftovers of turkey, if it was a bigger whole bird, we can make turkey soup. That could be a whole another episode. But this is gonna be this is gonna be fun to watch. And I think at the end of this, you'll be surprised about number one how easy it is to make. And number two, how good it comes out. So we'll see you at the next step. Okay, so we're back for the next, next step. We're going to season the bird and get the vegetables in and get that all started. So that's going to be pretty easy. It's going to go pretty quickly. and we get the bird right in the oven because at my time cooking this, it's 3.30. I want to have this thing done by 6. So this is a, uh, I want to get this done pretty fast. So basically with the cooking spray, we're just going to spray the skin a little bit. Again, we want to get that nice crunchy skin if we can. So that's why we want to make sure that the seasonings we put on it stays on it. Um, as far as the seasonings goes, you guys can choose what you want. Um, I mean, I think I put onion and garlic powder in pretty much every meal I make. It just adds a certain flavor to it. And I just want to make sure you get it on the bird. It's evenly coated as much as you can. This is more, not for eating, but for flavor of the gravy. Because again, we're going to do the same thing we do with that meat. If you guys watch the... Uh, the video in there where we did an oven roast, we're going to use the juices that are from this bird to make the gravy. Um, so that was garlic powder. This is onion powder. The first one I did. I think I might have called it garlic onion powder, but this is onion powder. And you guys can't see much on the screen, I know, because uh, it's white. You can see the coating as we put the pepper on it in the dry rub. And if you put something down on the bottom, it's fine. That's gonna go with the vegetables into the seasoning. This is the one that we'll do. And again, this is my own dry rub. This is creation. I put about six different recipes together to create this. It's 
got some cumin in it. It's got red pepper flakes. Um, it's a lot of different things. I'll, I'll make sure I do that on, on one of the next ones. And this one, we really want to make sure we get this in on the bird. You can use whatever you want. Just the, the one that I did early, just the onion powder, garlic powder, and it's maybe some paprika is fine. Um, you can buy dry rub at the store. I mean, I always get new dry rub when I see it, especially if it's on the sale or clearance. Corn makes a nice one. I'm just trying to make sure I get this. This is all the skin. This is where you want the flavor to go, you know? You see, that's really, really coated. The bird really has a lot on it. It's always nice to have a kitchen towel while you're doing work. So let's get right to the vegetables. So as you can see, I have uh, celery stalks in here with the uh, leaves on them. Now the leaves, again, we wouldn't eat those ones, but the leaves actually add a flavor, so they're worth keeping in. Even it's just, you know, helping with the gravy. These pieces of celery you can actually eat. These would be nice ones. A couple carrots. Cut the ends off. And I like cutting kind of chunky. Again, you just want to even flow around the bird or whatever meat you're putting in. I always want to kind of space it out pretty good. Uh, onion. Again, we're not dicing this up. We're just kind of going to quarter this and put them all over the place. So it's a pretty, pretty easy cut. And this bread actually has a popper on it, so I'll know when it hits that internal temperature of 165. But also permission, I know how it weighs. That's why we had that tag I was looking at a minute ago with the bird. You always want to save that. So when you're doing your um, your calculation for cooking, you need to have that because you don't want to dig to the rubbish if you threw it away and have to go get it, which I've had it done a few times. And then garlic. Again. This doesn't, this doesn't mean, you can cut this up fine if you want, you don't need to, because we're really just looking for flavor out of this. I like to take this out of the knife on this garlic and just smush it, and then I'll give it one, one more chop before I uh, put it in the pan. And I like this peeled garlic. You can buy fresh garlic and peel it yourself and then get to this point or just buy it already peeled and rock and roll. I'll probably do six or seven of these pieces. Then we'll just give it a little bit of chopping. Not too fine. I don't mind it chunky. It's gonna cook down. But again, it's just gonna add to that gravy, which was the end goal is to make a good gravy with this. The power that is a vegetable base. And onion and garlic adds a lot of flavor. It just does. All right. So that's in there, that's in there. Um, we're going to need a little bit of wine. Not supposed to do that. So while this wine will cook out, but we're just trying to add some liquid to it. Also gonna give us some good liquid. Is an apple, and this is gonna go. This around, into the cavity of the bird. Same thing, lime. Lemon, lime, whatever you prefer to use. I honestly use whatever fruit that I have in it. I think it's going to be going bad anyway soon. It's not a wrinkle or look, look the wrong way. 
Which I don't think I'd want to eat it anymore. Now I'm going to do some uh, build a pyramid of fruit in there to get it all stay in there. I was going to stick an orange in there, but you know what? It put a jam in there already. So that's it. That's going to go in the oven just like that. So what I need to do, what I forgot to do, before I turn the oven on, oh man, it's tight. These freaking hands trying to get these big hands of these gloves. It's not easy. These are made for small people. Is take this metal rack out. Bad boy right in. And that'll go in. Alexa, set timer for two and a half hours. So what I'll do with that one is let that sit in there. Um, I may baste it, I may not. I typically don't baste it. Um, if it's a whole turkey and it's Thanksgiving, it may be a different thing. You don't have to base this. I want to get that skin crunchy. And if I, if I think that the oil's not doing its job, I maybe I'll take, put some butter in that pan as well and start going over the bird. But the problem with that is if you, if you do too much, you can, if you're too aggressive with it, you can wash away all the driver we put on. So that's in. The next step for us is to get started on the mashed potatoes, the stuffing, so we can have this all out in pieces. So we'll get started on the mashed potatoes. I'm going to see you next. Okay, so we've got the bird in the oven, as you guys saw. Step two, we are on to the potatoes. So what you're gonna need to make homemade mashed potatoes, a couple things. Obviously you need potatoes. Uh, the big ones are better, these are pain in the ass. I have to peel every one of these because they're tiny, but we're gonna use them because we don't want any food to go to waste. Uh, one onion. You need half a stick to a stick of butter, some cream, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, a good sized pan, cutting board, and some chicken bouillon. And basically what we do is we put the bouillon in the water, we add a little flavor to the potatoes while they're cooking uh, with the minced onion. Then we drain all that, put it in the pan, uh, put it in a bowl, get the, uh, what is it? Get the, uh, the cake, the cake mixer in there. Whip them up. Um, you don't want to do too much because you start to pull the starches out of the potatoes. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll beat them up just a little bit to spread it around, salt, pepper to taste, and then it's going to be done. And they're going to be delicious. So we'll see you. Uh, as I'm putting that stuff together. So basically I'm just going to peel these now, peel the onions, and I'll show you how we set it up. Okay, we're at the next step now. We're going to be doing the uh, potatoes. So the first thing is, get the, as you can see, get the water boiling. All that is is water on the pan. I think you want me to film that. And for this amount of potatoes, I'm going to use two of these uh, Goya chicken seasoning things. You can find these in the Spanish aisle. They have salt, so they'll kind of flare up a little bit like that. And I put these in before I put anything in. I really don't want to get in the water. I don't want to get it on the potato. I'd rather get it on the water. Um, sometimes I've used chicken stock to boil potatoes. It all depends. But we want to get that stirred up, melted into the water. So I'm going to put the potatoes in, um, like we're going to do right now. And again, you guys uh, can see I cut up the potatoes. I just cut them in. Just regular little chunks. I mean, these are small potatoes. I just quartered them basically, all the potatoes. Uh, on an Idaho potato, I made like a bigger one. I may cut that in thirds and then quarter each one of those thirds. I like to have them as small as I can because I feel they cook faster. I'm all about speed, getting this thing done sooner than later. It's probably a safer way to put these in than doing this. They're getting stung, but I'm Polish. Can lead a dog to water. Jesus Christ. Okay. And I made a huge mess of water splatter everywhere. Which is awesome. Alright, so now that I got them in there, sort up a little bit. And I'm gonna bring the onions in. And basically with the onions, I just dice them up. You wanna get these as small as you can. Because uh, no one wants a big chunk of onion they taste when they're having mashed potatoes. But onion actually adds a nice flavor. Uh, sometimes I've actually put 
I've actually put a garlic and onion in there. Uh, but for today, we're just going to do it. Make it easy. So now they got that in there. We're going to just bring these to a boil. And uh, once they start boiling, I'm going to turn the heat down and then probably give them 10 to 15 minutes. And what I'm looking for with the fork is that the fork goes in and just kind of breaks off. Um, if the fork goes in and the potato sticks, it's not ready yet. So you definitely want them soft. I don't want them liquid. Like I don't want them squishy, squishy, but I definitely want them to have some consistency to them and I want them to be cooked. That takes about 15 minutes on average, uh, 10 to 15, depending on how much you have in there. It could take 20. I won't know until I feel them. Uh, what you got, and I'll show you guys that in the next step. Okay, good news. Potatoes are ready. So how do we tell if they're ready? Um, I'll show you guys. You kind of pull one out. And you just kind of go with the fork. And see how it's split like that? Do that again. Put the fork, and it just sort of splits apart. It's soft enough now where we can do it. You can also take one out and taste it, and you'll know like it has that consistency where it's ready to go. So this is ready to go. I'm going to grab the oven mitt. And basically we use a steel strainer. A good rule of thumb is anything hot goes in the steel, anything cold goes in the plastic. So you're washing vegetables, fruits, and stuff like that, potatoes, use the plastic pasta, anything hot you need to take out, use steel. You don't want any plastic leftovers in your, uh, your food. So I'm gonna dump the whole thing in there. Um, this is not gonna eliminate the onions. Onions we blend it in with the potatoes. I'm just going to let these guys sit here and just drain a little bit on their own and dry, and dry out. The next step for this, for us with this, is to, when these are finally dry 100%, um, which will take about five minutes. So I mean, we don't want to rush the turkey. He's got two hours left. So, we're, you know, I'm trying to get the stuff done in order to we can kind of keep filming and get stuff going. But I'm going to let this sit. Um, let it cool off a little bit, let all the water out once I'm done, take these off, let drain the water back in, put the potatoes back in the pan that we use to cook them, and then we'll take the blender, add the cream, the butter and stuff, and get started. One of the first things I like to do with the potatoes is, when I put the butter in first, I let it sit there, and I'll probably put the lid on, let that butter melt first, turn to a liquid before I add anything else. Once that butter's liquid, I'll add some cream, salt and pepper, maybe some onion garlic powder, and then I'll start whipping, and I just season Taste, season to taste, season to taste. You just got to keep doing it over and over again until you get it to the right consistency. Um, but it's not too bad. Uh, we go pretty fast and people are going to like it. Okay, we're at the next step. Okay, so what we do is take these potatoes off. Get this pan. We're going to drain the water. And they're going to go back in the pan. Holy moly, shouldn't have grabbed it like that. Come on, don't do it to me. Be nice. Be nice. Hey, hey. Be nice, please. Okay. So potatoes in. Next up for us, I took uh, five tablespoons of butter. Basically just going to put them in there and let that sit for about a minute, maybe two, just till they melt. Then we'll come back and put the cream, salt, and pepper on the other stuff. Okay, so we're going to check if this is ready. It is. All the butter's melted. So the next step we can do is put some stuff in. Um, a little bit of garlic powder. Onion powder, so Fresh ground pepper. And then the salt. It really needs salt. Salt's like the biggest flavor out of all we put in there to make it the potatoes taste decent. This is a Himalayan salt, but you can use regular sea salt. Uh, regular salt. As well. And 
A little bit of cream. You only need a little bit of cream, not a lot. You already have some butter in there. That's it. So now we're going to try to blend these together. Hopefully this doesn't make a mess. Again, this isn't Hollywood production. This is Polish production TV. <laughs> And the reason I do it in the pan, again, um, we have a lot of kids here, so there's already going to be a lot of dishes as it is. So I try to conserve as much as I can. Plus, this pan's warm, so it'll keep the potatoes warm until they're ready to eat. I'm just trying to go easy and ready to get some of the stuff off, because I don't want to flip the stuff over there, but. See that it's still really dry, so I need to put some more cream in there. And you can use milk too. A lot of times I use milk, I just have to have cream so we can use it. Again, you always have to taste test this and just kind of halfway through it and see where you're at. Definitely needs more salt. Yeah, I don't want to sit there for an hour cracking that thing. I don't know where my salt is. My baking is salt. Well, oh, there it is. Okay. Right in my front of my face, how it always works. So we'll put a little bit more on there. This is just regular table salt. Wasn't too much in the chief, You want to be careful about not beating these too much. You start to beat the starch out of them. But, I mean, that's like whip. You can see the way it looks on the wall. Yeah, that's good. Let's see this pan is easier. You can kind of see what the potatoes look like there. You pull them up. Top the fork. You know what? That's going to taste real nice with some gravy on it. So that stays on the stove. That's ready. Now it's going to do the turkey, the stuffing, um, well the stuffing first, then the turkey. And then when the turkey comes out, we use the drippings to make the gravy. And then we're done. Open a can of cranberry sauce, bada bing, bada boom, it's done. This is an update when I ordered the turkey. Looking good. I'm just going to take this pan and rotate it so the turkey's facing the other way. So we get an even cook around the bird. Every hour I rotate it. Hey, we're back and now we're making uh, stuffing for today. So basically I like to make it as simple as possible. Um, I use a pre-made stuffing mix and I just add some things to it. Uh, if you want to get old bread and make croutons out of it, make your own stuffing. This isn't the show for you. I try to make this as simple as we can, as fast as we can and, and make it taste good. Uh, so what we're going to need is two boxes. Turkey stuffing. We got one chicken, one turkey. That's what I had. Um, a half a can of water chestnuts, sliced. One stalk of garlic. I'm sorry, one stalk of celery, and a small onion. You may not even use the whole thing. A stick of butter and a pan of water with three cups of water in it. Um, you can omit either one of these two. If you didn't want to use water chestnuts, you can just use two stalks of celery, or get rid of the celery. Put one whole can of water chestnuts in there. We we'll get the slice them. We're gonna chop them up a little bit. I know you're probably thinking like water chestnuts and stuffing. It works, believe me. Uh, they don't have any flavor and they have like a crunch that you just can't get just from the celery or own. Um, so all that goes together and um, it takes minutes for it to make. So it's super simple. 
I'm gonna get started dicing this stuff up. We'll put it in the pan as we go, and you guys see us at the next step. Quickly, how I like to dice up the celery. So basically, I like to take it, and basically I'm just gonna cut some thin strips out of it. A few of them. I'm gonna be very careful here. You gotta have a sharp knife. You gotta have a sharp knife. You wanna be very careful as to what you, how you do it. Pick up those little small strips. I'm gonna come this way. And again, I'm not trying to add huge pieces of celery into this. I just want a little crunch from it. And the celery is a little bit of flavor. Onion, I like to make it real small, uh, sliced up as well. So I'm going to do the cross cut method, which I've shown you guys before in other videos. Or if you just saw how we made potatoes. Make small cuts. Go almost all the way down. If you're new at this and you kind of, if you cut through it a bunch of times, one of the tricks you can do is you can put chopsticks on either side of the onion. As you cut down, the chopsticks will stop you from going all the way through. But if you have a sharp onion, you can it a few times, you're just patient. Take your time. Get it done. Again, I won't even use this whole onion. This is just little bits we're trying to put into it. Now I can cross cut this. I should get small, tiny pieces of onion. That's it. Like that. I'm going to cut up the butter. And basically with the, this, I'm just following the directions on the box. It says four cups and four tablespoons of butter per box. So this is eight tablespoons. And I just cut it up to make it go quicker. I'm just going to add that to the water. We're going to scrape this in. And I'm just going to take these water chestnuts and cut them up in tiny pieces. But because this is a long process, I'm not going to make you watch it. But I'm going to cut them all up. Then I'm going to put this thing right in the oven and start, start getting it boiled. All right, so you guys can see that now it's boiling. Per the recipe, we would add the bread, mi the bread mix in now to make the stuffing. But because we added uh, celery, I need water chestnuts, I'm going to let that cook for a minute. Um, so I know that we put in exactly three cups of water, um, but because we added in um, the onion, the celery, and the water chestnuts, it has a little bit of water. So it, when it cooks it, it will release that, and then that turns on the vapor. Typically, you need to put this on right away, um, but because there's extra water, gonna be extra water in there, if some dissipates, we're fine with that, because it's still gonna mix fine. Um, additionally, if you overdo this sometimes, you put too much water into it, and you put the stuffing in, and it looks real mushy, um, you can add breadcrumbs right away. Uh, and, and then put the lid on and it should absorb most of it. You know, you'd want to sprinkle some in, maybe a quarter cup, a half a cup of breadcrumbs if you just need to suck up some of that water and still have that stuffing taste. Um, something I discovered as I one time just went over, a little overworked, overzealous with the water. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Uh, one of the other things is when I make this, right, honestly, when I make this during uh, Thanksgiving, I actually add a little bit of that Jimmy Dean sausage to this. And I, I'm talking about when I make a big batch, this is a small batch, when I make a big batch, I'll actually put some Jim Dean sausage in there as well. And man, that little bit of celery, water chestnut, onion, and Jim Dean sausage, and then the stuffing mix itself, it's nice. Um, and then also sometimes you can take that stuffing and put it into a muffin tin and make stuffing muffins. Um, so some people want like stuffing with that, you know, that little crisp edge to it. So I'll make, sometimes I'll take the stuffing that I have, instead of just make it in a pan and put it in a bowl and serve it. Um, you can bake it in the oven and that those little muffins at the top will get that nice little crunch to the crust to it that some people love. And it's easy to present on a plate, just have a little muffin on each plate. Um, I call them stuffing muffins. Um, but I'm gonna let this boil for a couple minutes. And I wanna cook that onion a little bit, that celery softened it up, the water chestnut, 
because um, then once I pour the stuffing mix into this, it pretty much that's it, game over. You're done. You just put the stuffing mix in, put the lid on, and you wait five minutes, it's done. You just fuck with the fork. Again, simple. We try to keep it so simple on this, just to make stuff simple that people like and eat. Um, that's the reason why I cut everything up very, very fine. Because the kids see any kind of vegetable or green or red or anything in there, they may back off of it. But if they don't notice that they eat it, go, this is good, they don't even know they're eating it. Anyways, we'll see you at the, uh, well, you know what? Let's put it in now. It's been cooking long enough. I think it's been boiling for a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and dump it. So we're just dumping the whole bag. And turn the heat off immediately. Then we just make a fork. And just make sure you stir all those breadcrumbs so they got water on them. Because this is going to absorb all the water. Just want to make sure you get everything moved around in the right way. So the celery's onion and the watch is not spread on even. That's it. The lid on. Oh jeez. You have the heat. Boom, five minutes that thing is done. Or not, this is nice. Okay, we're getting ready to take this up now. You can take a look at it. Ooh, that is warm. Okay. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. A little bit of crunch. You, you taste a little bit of that onion. That celery adds a little bit of flavor. And that watch us and just gives it a little, like a, just a tiny bit, not much. You can't really see any of it. It's all mixed in with the seasonings. And that's it. So next up, I'm going to be doing the, uh, the turkey's going to come out of the oven. We're going to take it off of the pan, we're gonna drain out all the juices, um, try to separate the oil from the actual juice, use that same juice to put with the gravy, add some wine to it, bada bing bada boom, we're having turkey dinner. Okay, it's been two and a half hours, you can see that that thing had popped. I'm gonna leave it in just a little bit longer, I want the skin to get a little more crispy. So I'm going to give it another 15 minutes. I'm going to actually kick it up to a light broil just to get a little more crisp on that turkey. Okay, so it's time. We're almost there. We're going to pull the turkey out of the oven. And we just gave it about five minutes extra broil time in there. Just the crisp just came just a little bit more. And I saw a little bit more juices come out of this thing, which was nice. That's that for the oven. So next up with this is to take the turkey off. And we're just gonna let it we're gonna let it sit up, sit and rest on the cutting board. Now ideally uh, a board with a, a groove on it would be better because you're gonna catch some of the juices, but I'm gonna try to be quick, take this out. pan as quick as I can and get it to the sink. I have the strainer under there, so warm, and I'm basically going to pour this into it, and underneath the catching all the juices is the pan, and we're going to filter out all the bad stuff from the good stuff. Okay, we're going to try to do that. Alright, Yeah, the kids getting restless. They want to eat as much as we do. Um, and that's that. So the roasted vegetables are there. Uh, what we're going to do next is make the gravy. Then we're going to cut the turkey and plate this bad boy. Okay, so we're back to getting the gravy. So 
basically the first step was to get all the bad stuff out of this. We just have drippings there now. We're gonna take a can of Heinz homestyle gravy, turkey flavor. We'll put, pour that in. That's sort of our base, along with the uh, what we have, and we use a little wine. You know, I like to use wine. And I'm gonna fill this probably about a third of the way up with white wine. This is a uh, Chardonnay. Then basically what we do is just shake this up, add it to the gravy, and then we oh sorry, and then we're just gonna stir this up. And make this all kind of blend together. And I'm just gonna cook this for about, oh I don't know, maybe 10, 10 or 15 minutes, and then all we do is cut the turkey, plate everything, we're good. Okay, we're just about done here. What we're gonna do first is we're going to, the turkey has now sat and rested for about 15 minutes. We're gonna cut into it, and I took it off the cutting board and put it in the pan because what's gonna happen is we're gonna cut into this and it's gonna release more juices, which we can then collect and then put in the gravy before we finish the gravy off. But we're gonna basically just cut the turkey and I'll just put a hang on very tough. Just roll right over. See when I turn this, it's been almost what we call butterfly, right? You cut it on both sides, like I can see the juices coming out. I'm gonna get, give that another five minutes, collect the juices, I'll slice these off, put them on the serving board, and then we're gonna plate this bad boy. We're gonna be done. And we made it. It's all finished. Uh, the whole process took roughly about two and a half, three hours, and uh, obviously the bulk of that was waiting for the turkey to be done. So I'm um, Start plating this so you can see what it turns out to look like. Man, this piece of the skin. Oh. Mmm. Man. A little bit of crunch to it. It's nice. Let's put some ashes on here. Typically, put this on all the turkey as well, but that might make a mess, and we want to present this to look nice. So, this is the final dish. Get that little mashed potatoes with gravy volcano going on. Delicious turkey, it's piping hot. Nice, fresh tasting stuffing. And then a can of cranberry sauce. I mean, you can make your own, but it's just better can, it just comes out better. 
and that's it. It's not too hard to do. It just takes a little bit of time. Anyways, I hope you guys like this. My kids love it. Yours are going to love it too. I'll see you guys at the next cooking episode. Until then, stay safe.